Red Sonia. Uh, Let's guess. kill another franchise, why don't we? Okay, Red Sonia reboot finally filling with Matilda Lutz. I, I realized the two articles I sent you on this, they were pretty much parroting the same, so I just used one of them, all right? so I took one Pick of whichever one. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I just picked the one already. So, uh, Millennium Media's big screen adaptation of Red Sonia seems to have found its new lead in Matilda Lutz who has been tapped for the title role with other cast additions, including Wallace Day and Robert Sheehan. The film has now finally kicked off production in Bulgaria under the direction of Solomon Kane, Helmer, MJ Bassett, after years in development hell. Now, uh, I nothing against this new lead actress, but I did want to point out she is also not a redhead. Yep. Um, so, you know, people who... And people are praising this casting decision. Well, Hate the gingers that. once again. I mean, maybe they'll dye her hair, and they probably could have dyed the hair of the last actress they were going to use. I think people were going nuts over the last actress, but they're praising this one. I'm not quite understanding it. And I have nothing against either of these actresses that were going to be playing her. I, I actually did like Hannah John Kamen. She's she has a lot of street. She has a lot of cred in the science fiction community. She was on, I think, Killjoy. She did she did voiceover work in Dark Souls. I didn't realize that the video game franchise. She's done. She reads comics. She's not, but. It was a scheduling conflict, which is why she's not doing this now. Mm -hmm. um, Red Sonia is inspired by the Dynamite Entertainment comic books and has been a dream project of Bassett for some time. Speaking of the deadline, he explained, I wanted to make a Red Sonia movie since I was a teenager. She has been a powerful presence for me and a character that I have always wanted to bring to the screen with my own voice and vision. When I met Matilda Lutz, I knew she had all the magic I was looking for and could see the complexity and depth she would bring to Sonya. The lead role in Red Sonya was originally played by Hannah John Kamen, but due to a scheduling conflict, she was forced to subside. It seems that the change around worked out well, along with Bassett. Millennium Medium's president, Jeffrey Greenstein, was quick to praise the actress as well as the directory commented. This has been a long journey from script to screen, and we are excited to go into production. After assembling the best creative team, an amazing band of up-and-coming talent and a fun, fantastical world fueled by Red Sonja IP. MJ and his amazing filmmaker with fantastic vision and Matilda is absolutely brilliant in revenge that we knew she was right for this role the moment we saw her making them the perfect duo for Red Sonja. Uh, have you heard of this actress? I'm not saying anything. No, I haven't. Her, uh, against her. I'm just, okay. I'm just, maybe people in the chat have. Um, uh, let's set aside the question of red hair why do we keep uh, uh, casting twigs as Am amazonian women I, I yeah don't... good point i don't know um any chance of hold on any chance of red sonia donning her chainmail bikini like it's cheesecake female warrior yeah they are going to treat Gallagher. about the same chance as uh as a iceberg in hell yeah, she looks nice. She's not a Gina Cron. Yeah, well, no, I mean, she's nice. Like I, I, like I said, I'm not attacking this actress. I don't know anything about her. And who knows? This movie could end up being good, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, okay, it has not, it not been an easy journey for the new iteration of Red Sonja, having started back in 2008 with Rose McGowan, expected to take on the role made famous by Bridget Nielsen in the 1985 movie, which also starred Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, McGowan dropped out of the movie following injuries that left her with permanent damage to her right arm and subsequently Amber Heard was at one point said to be taking on the role but that also yeah out. that ain't gonna happen now okay uh, as well as lead star issues the movie has also gone through numerous writers and directors having originally been set to be held by Simon West then Brian Singer in 2018 until his firing a year later Oh, um, yeah, that was probably, there was a scandal associated with him, I think. And in 2019, yeah. Joey Soloway was linked to the project after Soloway's departure, along with John Kamen in March this year. Now looks like Bassett is now set to finally bring the movie to the big screen. After suffering so many setbacks, there are bound to be questions about whether this time around the movie will make it all the all, all the way, but with production already underway, it certainly has moved for, on further than previous efforts. There is currently no release date set for the movie, but if all goes well, the movie could arrive sometime in late late in 2023. How do we feel about Red Stonia, this character? Did you read her comics? 
Uh, no, I was only tangentially aware of her through, well, obviously the Brigitte Nielsen film, you know, and, and uh, you know, seeing the artwork, you know, in relationship to Conan and so forth. Uh, got a lot of the history kind of filled in by uh, Midnight's Edge. You know, Andre has done some really great stuff talking about the history of the rights and, and, and stuff related to Conan and Red Sonja. He just uh, actually uh, last week he did a, a great one talking about the, uh, the background on, on uh, Red Sonja and how she was very different uh, a, a character than what she became um, and, and what most people think of her. as they, Most people, I think, think of Red Sonja now as like just a, a female Conan and that really wasn't the original plan for the character. But um, Let's not have yeah. her dressed like a Boris Vallejo fantasy picture. It's going to provoke me into quoting passages from Sex and D&D from Dragon Magazine's cartoon. Oh, I'm not familiar them. with that. Was that a thing? Was that a complaint or something? Oh, it, well, it certainly is now. It's it's all the you know the thing about boob armor and da 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 da, and it's it, it really is the joke, right? I mean, this whole idea that that dressing in fantasy male for women to be sexy is not going to give any protection in combat. Well, no, of course not. But then again, Conan the Barbarian's out there running around with uh, uh, you know briefs and nothing else. Yeah. This is uh, not about armor, you dumbasses. This is about covering the naughty bits so we don't get an X rating. And on some of those original um, uh, Weird Tales covers, the naughty bits wouldn't be covered on some of the women. Well, that's true. Margaret yeah. Brundage, who actually was a female uh, a female writer, a uh, female artist that did a lot of those covers. She was the one making. A woman, yeah, a make female them. misogynist, you know, self-hating, right? That's what they would say now. I actually have a, col- a book of collection of her covers, actually. And, of course, uh, Boris Vallejo, of course, bought it back later Both, on. Both great artists. Okay. According to the Hollywood Reporter, Borat star Sasha Baron Cohen was approached to play the villainous magician Kula, Kula, Kula and Goth in this movie about the she-devil with the sword. Uh, Millennium wanted him to lead the cast alongside Hannah and John Kamen, but the actor, coming off the back of an Oscar-nominated nomination for his work in The Trial of the Chicago 7, turned down a whopping $7 million offer. He was in high demand at the time, of course, and that opportunity was presented to him when Joey Soloway was at the helm. Since then, the screenplay has been rewritten, and we no longer know if the character will appear. No, according to this, it's going to be her sister is the villain. Probably, um, yeah. I let's make sure we get another woman in there. Can't have another white guy, right? Well, Even as the villain. Though, this is the Borat guy, right? Yes, yes, it is. You see him in a in a in a in a Red Sonja movie as the villain. The only thing I could have seen him in, he got passed over for. I could have seen him in the uh, um, Freddie Mercury film, but they decided to go a different route, and so back with it. Arnold sweating in his shorts. With the the good flapping in the wind during combat would be an excellent defense against close combat. Yeah, no, yeah, actually, you make a a compelling point there. Oh, the Borat thing. It's the suspe- suspender thong. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I I had to go with that. That was just so funny to me. I couldn't uh, I couldn't not. Did you, you know? know that Brett Ratner was once attached to direct a Conan movie? No. I the no guy idea. that did Rush Hour, and I had a horrible thought of you remember the Rush Hour movies, right? With Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I saw at least and two was, of them. I was expecting Chris Tucker to be like his 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 adventuring companion in that, and yeah. like he'd go up to Conan and he'd say, "Do you understand the words? Words that are coming out of my mouth." I was expecting that to be and like he'd make Conan dumb, say so like, "Oh, Conan like peanuts, like talk like George of the Jungle or something." Exactly. I was expecting this to be a disaster. I was like, like back in the day, but. He never ended up directing that movie, though. But uh, I, as far as as far as um, Red Sonja goes, I would encourage everybody to go check out uh, Midnight's Edge. They go into far more detail than we ever could yes. about a lot of the behind the scenes. Uh, you know, the Borat thing is more just a, a joke on my part to you know be able to throw <laughs> him in the in the in the the banana schlong well, you're you know. joking that could have been him in the movie you don't know i know movies. right um but uh but they kind of cover uh you know their yeah and and you can trust andre andre's a big fan of conan and and red sonia so he's 
he's uh, he's got a very uh, reserved uh, and and right thinking uh, you know concept of what's going on over there. Uh, so he he he's hoping for the best, but he's he's seeing some possible worst. For me though, I gotta say, this whole film, this whole Red Sonia thing, um, concerns about you know Borat and uh, a, a non ginger actress. All aside, I ha- I will have nothing to do with this film. I will not see it. I will not support it. I will not be reviewing it. Uh, it's a complete non-starter for me, and this is why. Uh, uh, Heroic Girls at San Diego Comic Con 2022 tweeted out, "I love Sonia, but this is tricky material. What they need to do is." start with Gail Simone's Queen of Plagues as their storyboard and go from there. Picked up and responded to by Gail Simone. I have been a consultant on this film since almost day one. I'm out. I'm done. This is not Red Sonja. This is Gail Simone fan fiction. I want nothing to do with it. And this is another example of another franchise that steals the name of some beloved franchise to try to co-opt its fan base and gives you something entirely different. Um, You know, all, uh, you know, sorry to Spartacris, we didn't get to anything related to uh, the the Rings of Power tonight, Um, but there's another one. Where it's they they give you the name of the franchise, but it has nothing to do with the actual lore. I would encourage you to. I just dropped a link. Go check out Fresh Baked Nerd Cookies, who did a uh, part one of a multi-parter talking about the uh, the Rings of Power. I think I'll she covers it much much better than I ever could. And uh, in a lot of ways, Fresh Baked Nerd Cookies is the is the anti Troy. Anti Troy gets angry and loud and curses, she's very calm. and she's very soft spoken and and very mellow and very uh, intellectual. And she outlines her arguments with good critical thinking and evidence and a clear knowledge of history and lore. I mean, her channel really is a lore channel. I just don't give a fuck enough about the people that would support this shit to to be that calm. But she deserves the likes and subscribes, just saying. Okay, so how about you, you take pity on your wife's poor ears and stop shouting? I, I can't, I can't. It's just, <laughs> I'm a passionate guy. I can't, uh, I can't keep it in. It boils up and I just got to get it out. <laughs> 